If you start with the first pro process, which was to be 100% self-supplied by renewable energy, the first 10 years, we, we made a very ambitious plan then and actually successfully met these goals. We, we, are, we were, after 10 years, producing more energy than we totally consumed. The next is even more ambitious, to be 100% fossil free by 2030, which is 20 years before the, the Danish ambition about being independent of fossil, fr uh, fossil fuel um, free society. We have this approach that if the community not as a whole is participating, then we create a lot of resistance against the uh, new technology. So we have ensured everybody, high and low, to participate in this by asking the banks to provide uh, ownership documents. So they'll make a bank loan to anyone who ap approaches the bank and they just need to sign this ownership document and then they'll keep the ownership document until the windmill or the solar panel has paid back uh, the cost of the bank loan. And then anyone who owns it uh, has it as uh, your own uh, ownership do document. So the challenge of today is to meet kind of the, the, the numbers so for energy savings, energy conservation, we have already met 20-30% energy conservation in houses, which is the lowest hanging fruits on the, on the tree. If we climb a little bit higher, it becomes more expensive per kilowatt hour saved. So even more insulation, even better windows is an extra in investment we need to do here. And the cost of saving the first 20% is much more efficient than the next 20%. So this is again the numbers. Uh, and this is a challenge. If we can bring the numbers, people won't react to it. Transportation. It, we, we still depend on ferries and trucks to, dis, to distribute and deliver all the goods and people who want to travel around. And we have bought a new ferry, a 200 million Danish corner hybrid ferry to, to the mainland Jotland, which is running on LNG gas, which is kind of a front runner for our own production of uh, carbon free uh, fuel uh, made out of uh, waste, a biological material, methane. But the market price, the global market price on gas is low, which means that our price, production price is high. So if we can't meet the numbers, the director, the CEO of the ferry company, he won't be happy because he will then be forced to buy more expensive fuel and the ticket price will go up and will be very unpopular in the local population because it's more expensive to drive uh, a more sustainable ferry. For electric cars in the population, they are still suffering a little bit from capacity. So if I introduce an electric car, the range is still below 200 kilometers and people want to go and visit their aunt or uncle in West Jutland and they need 300 kilometers. And the car is even more expensive than a similar car uh, made uh, on, uh, with a combustion engine. So for me, it's really hard to convince people to buy, to choose an electric car in front of a combustion engine with a higher efficiency. The capacity of wind power has gone up also. So we have today a one megawatt wind turbines, which people like, they're good. The next generation, if we want to repower the existing structure, will be three, four times bigger. And this is then we go up in numbers again, and the investment will be humendous. And we need to kind of find a lot of other investors because this kind of money is not here on the island. Solar panels, we have had a period where people are putting nice solar panels on their own roofs. But if we need, want to meet the UN development goals, we need to speed up capacity, which means on the field, mega size, uh, many, many hectares of solar panels. And this is again, uh, we like the little plants, but the bigger plants is kind of challenging us because it's spoiling the visual impact. So these are the, the, the things that we are struggling with to meet the ambition of 2030. To make this work, we need in the European context, we need a very direct framework that will help the good stuff and punish the bad stuff. Which means, again, in Denmark, we've had a high carbon, a carbon tax on, on using fossil fuels. And this high carbon tax was then taken out of energy consumption from fossil fuels and reinvested in green technology. So this is how you can finance the next generation and bring down the cost. If you taxate and punish the, the polluter, uh, so we are letting the polluter pay and putting the investment into kind of new green infrastructure. So we need political help to do that because this is not for local little markets to, to handle that situation. We have a very hard time identifying the numbers to, to make them positive for people as it is today. Because we've had a fight with Russia delivering gas to the European market, which is actually lowering the general gas prices also here on this island. 
So if we don't do anything about that, we cannot produce the right numbers and nothing will happen. People will be resting and waiting for the market to change. I think our dream is still there. So if you're talking about technology and economy only, then you forget about culture and social, uh, social uh, what do you call it, wealth. I think we, I live in a very beautiful community. We know each other, we shake hands and we, we can meet everybody. I can call anyone and he'll come and help me. So we have a high social uh, wealth here. We, we, we are socially a very strong little community. And I think that is, that's very important in this message also. So we can actually fight low gas prices. <laughs> because if we're only talking about market and economy, then we'll be kind of grumpy little narrow-minded people who, who don't believe that the, the community is, is valuable. There's a reason why we live here. Otherwise, we should just move to Copenhagen or to Brussels or to any big city because that's what everybody is doing. So, so that's another sustainable factor. This is a sustainable community, not just a sustainable energy production. And I think these two things, we're juggling a little, little bit between technology and economy and social capacity. And I think right now we are working very much with the social capacity because the threat is that the market will run us over and uh, flatten us completely because we can't fight gas prices from Putin or from anybody else. So what can we do locally here as a consequence of our own activity? And I think that is, that is even more important. You prepare people for the next battle and we want to fight for a greener community here. And I think, I believe the gas price will go up. I think, I believe electricity prices will go up. That's everybody's prediction in the market and it will happen quite soon. So we need to prepare for that.